In this video, we go over each of the three main translators, an assembler, compiler, and an interpreter. As humans, we pick a programming language and we write source code. Source code is descriptive and easy for us to understand, read, maintain, and debug. However, it's no good for machines. They need the source code converted into pure binary so they can understand and execute it. This pure binary form of our source code is called machine code. The process of converting source code to machine code is known as translation. When translating source code, we use one of three types of translators, an assembler, an interpreter, and a compiler. Here on the screen is a handy abstracted diagram that shows the three different types of translators. So starting in the top part with the green background, we have our low level languages. These are typically written in assembly code and they're translated directly in a one-to-one -one relationship into machine code by an assembler. When it comes to high-level languages, it gets a bit more complicated, and we have a couple of paths we can take. The top line being highlighted here shows source code being translated by an interpreter into machine code. Interpreters take one line of code, translate it, and then execute it. In this bottom path, we see the source code being translated by a compiler. Now, in this situation, a couple of things can happen depending on the given language. Typically, we have some object code produced. And then next, a linker will pull in any pre-compiled functions from libraries. Now, at this point, a couple of things could happen. Either the finished output is now optimized and turned directly into machine code, or the code gets further translated into what we call intermediate code. This can then run on a number of machines given certain circumstances, and an interpreter can then turn this intermediate code into machine specific code. We look at intermediate code in another video. So let's talk about the main differences here between a compiler and interpreter, because we've briefly said they're both used to translate high level languages, but they fundamentally do it in different ways. So here we see a compiler and we've got a syntax error on line two, and that's preventing this program from running. That statement there should say print, not P R I N. The error needs to be corrected before the program will run. And this is because a compiler goes through the entire source code from start to finish before it turns it into executable machine code. So any syntax error in the source code will prevent the compiler from producing the output it needs. An interpreter, however, is different. This is exactly the same program as the one we just saw in Python this time written in an early high-level language called BBC Basic. If we run it, line 20 and 30 are both translated one at a time and then run. You can see it outputs the value of the counter here. It then tries to translate line 30, but there's a syntax error, so the program fails at this point. If we correct the error on line 30 and run the program again, it executes without errors. The big difference here with the interpreter is there was a syntax error, but the program translated one line and ran it, and then the next line and ran it, and didn't require the entire program to be syntax or error free. On the screen now is a nice summary table that provides a description and some advantages and disadvantages of the three main types of translators, assemblers, compilers, and interpreters. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. 
What is the difference between an assembler, interpreter and a compiler? And when would you use each type of translator?